We have never lost paradise, but human consciousness tells us we have lost it and that we have to regain it. But in fact, paradise has never been lost. Paradise is never to be therefore regained. We are in Eden, just as we are now. When we start to feel anxious or depressed, instead of asking, what do I need to get to be happy? The question becomes, what am I doing to disturb the inner peace that I already have? We have two eyes to see two sides of things, but there must be a third eye which will see everything at the same time and yet not see anything. That is understand Zen. Emptiness, which is conceptually liable to be mistaken for sheer nothingness, is in fact the reservoir of infinite possibilities. Dhyana is retaining one's tranquil state of mind in any circumstance, unfavorable as well as favorable and not being disturbed or frustrated even when adverse conditions present themselves one after another. Great works are done when one is not calculating and thinking. Technical knowledge is not enough. One must transcend techniques so that the art become an artless art, growing out of the unconscious. The truth of Zen is the truth of life, and life means to live, to move, to act, not merely to reflect. Not to be bound by rules, but to be creating one's own rules. This is the kind of life which Zen is trying to have us live. Unless it grows out of yourself, no knowledge is really yours. It is only borrowed plumage. The fighter is to be always single-minded with one object in view. To fight, looking neither backward nor sidewise. To go straight forward in order to crush the enemy is all that is necessary for him. The worst passion we mortals cherish is the desire to possess. Even when we know that our final destination is a hole not more than three feet square, we have the strongest craving. 